All right, everyone. Uh, we're just going to quickly go over uh, what you're going to be seeing tomorrow on the mock exam. Um, so I'll show you what we're going to be looking at, how the exam is going to go, how we're going to upload our answers and stuff like that. So let's start. Uh, first of all, you should have gotten an email uh, that looks something like this. All right. So I figured out how to send out personalized mass emails. So you should have your name. Uh, and then this, a, a mock exam practice code. All right, so you'll have a practice code that is an alphanumeric code. There's numbers and letters. Um, and then there's going to be some links. Uh, the multiple choice, open response, those links will be provided on the day of the exam. Um, and then there's the answer sheet website, which we'll go to in a second. I will give you paper answer sheets, a formula sheet, and I will have blue or black pens. Uh, I recommend that if you have a pen that you like, bring it. You will need a blue or a black pen for your open response. Um, so what will happen is everyone uh, will ideally get into the building around 730. We're going to meet in the uh, media center lobby. Right? So from there, we will then figure out who's going downstairs and who is going to be upstairs. It doesn't matter where you go. Um, Mr. Estabrooks and I will both be monitoring um, well, we will each be monitor monitoring one of those areas. Um, so whoever is wherever, it doesn't really matter. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're with your classmates or not. Everybody's working on the exam on their own. So when you get to a desktop computer, you will log on, open a browser, uh, go to your email, and then I will send out that morning another mass personalized email with your real code and then the links for the multiple choice and open response. When you click the link to the multiple choice or open response, it'll bring you to a very simple website um, that basically just displays uh, the questions in essentially a PDF form. So there's no extraneous information, nothing for you to click, nowhere for you to write, just the questions. Um, so let's say we do open uh, those questions where are we going to write our responses? So let's go to the multiple choice. Um, you will have a piece of paper that looks like this. It's very, very simple. Boxes of 10 questions um, in which you will write your answers. Okay, A, B, C, D, etc. There will be mostly single answer multiple choice questions, but there will also be five uh, multi-answer questions. That's 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. Um, those you will, well, you're, you're going to send me pictures of your entire answer sheet anyways. Um, but those 46 to 50, you're going to um, post with your open response. But we'll talk about that in a second. So let's say we take our, we, so we say three, two, one, go at eight o'clock on the dot. You have an hour and a half exactly to do these 50 multiple choice questions. Um, what happens then? What happens afterwards? Well, once we have everything written down, we close the multiple choice uh, tab and we go over to this website, right? So if we look at our email, we see this Engage website. So we're going to go to that website and it's going to look something like this. In fact, that will look exactly like this. Um, and what you're going to do is you will input your real code into that. So if you want to practice on a computer, you can use the practice code that you got in the email from me today. However, tomorrow, uh, you will have to use your real code in the real email, All right? So here's a random practice code that I chose. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click go. Uh, and here we have, so this is obviously the wrong exam, but this is a sample, this is a sample code. Um, and so I'm going to be learner school man. Type our name, all right, and we're going to continue. So this is what we will be faced with. We will have two boxes, multiple choice, and free response. Um, when we are done with that particular segment, we put our pencils down, we go into this website, and we click multiple choice. It's going to say that a timer will start. It's not going to, there's no timer. I am going to time you. I'm going to give you approximately 10 whole minutes to submit, to click all of the requisite buttons. Okay. So we click start and this is what we are presented with. Um, and this currently only has questions one through 10, 
but yours will have exactly the same format as this. You'll have 1 through 10, 11 through 20, just like this. So you can do it in batches of 10. I think that makes it uh, a lot simpler and easier to transfer over. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, make a pretty pattern with the fake multiple choice questions. And once I'm satisfied, I have to make sure that I've clicked every bubble, not every bubble. I have clicked a bubble for every question. I'm satisfied with my answers. I've gone over them. I've checked them. I can only click submit once. So I do that. Hooray. Learner school man has uh, submitted his multiple choice questions. That box is now grayed out. So at this time, uh, we will take like a 10 minute break for you to hydrate uh, and or caffeinate, etc. And then we'll sit down and do our free response. I will say three, two, one, go. And you will click the free response, the open response link that will be here. And you in, in front of you will, will be this. And by the, this, I mean a bunch of these. So I'm going to run off a ton of many copies of this sheet. Um, and this is for you to write upon. Um, key things on this, there's Q number. That means the number of the question you are answering. You may answer the questions in any order in which you choose. Uh, and then page number. And that means uh, which page in your solution is this. So if it takes you three pages to answer the question, three handwritten pages, then you would have to label them one, two, three, right? and then you will upload them um, as follows. So once, once we're done with our hour and a half of free response, okay, uh, now we have to go upload those responses. So what will that look like? Well, if we go here, um, what we're going to do, and I, I made sure that this works, um, we have to take pictures of our uh, open response and upload them um, to the website. Now, I double, triple checked, and we should um, be able to log out on the desktop and log in using the same code on a phone browser. That will then allow us to directly upload uh, photos from our phone to the website, right? So theoretically, we can log out here, log in on there on our phone and select photos from there. A um, couple of quirks with this that you should know, All right? So it says enter text directly or upload image files. We're going to upload image files, start. And then we're going to see a box for each question, okay? So for each question, um, we have to do a very specific thing. We are going to need to upload all pictures for that question in one batch, OK, so if I wrote three full pages for question one and I took three pages uh, of the three pictures, one of each page, I'm going to need to upload them all at the same time. So I'm going to choose files. Um, I'm going to go to my pictures and just get some random stuff. Um, what's fun? Oh, I don't know. I like these Julia sets. OK, so here's a picture my, by fractals that I like. All right, I'm going to pretend that these are my answers. Okay, so I'll select this one, that one, and this one are all part of question one. So I'm going to upload theirs. Oh, it's a GIF. Whoops, it's not a supported format. Uh, any normal um, image should be a supported format. How about a meme um, or a burb? I don't know. How about Yu-Gi-Oh? Let's do that. All right, so I, I select a Yu-Gi-Oh meme and I put it in there. Um, and then once I have, uh, once I've selected and uploaded all of those documents in one batch, right, all those pictures in one batch, I click upload um, and it will upload all of the pictures for that question. You will then go to question two and question three and question four and question five. And for all of those, you will upload all of the photos for that question into that particular box. You may only click the Submit Responses button once. So you have to upload all of your pieces of all five questions before you click the Submit Responses. I also just got an email 
or not just, I just remembered that I had an email um, about the fact that for the multi-answer questions, which is 46 through 50, right, you have to respond with two answers, A and B, or B and D, or whatever. There's going to be another uh, place to upload a picture, which is questions 46 through 50, those multi-answer. So you're going to put one of those in there as well, right? So we're going to submit responses. All right, and then hooray, we are done. So these are both grayed out, and we are done. Uh, then we can go home. All right. So I'm going to log out of Learner Schoolman, and uh, that'll be that. Okay. So now I just want to share with you a couple of tips and tricks uh, for the free response that we will continue to go over. Um, I'm going to give you this master document later. But... Uh, you are guaranteed to get three types of questions and then a, two other random uh, open responses. You're guaranteed to get an experimental design question, a QQT, and a paragraph length response. What is some key information you're going to need for those? Um, for the experimental design question, uh, first of all, the equipment. You can use any equipment that you think it would be reasonable uh, to see in a physics classroom. Uh, if we have used it in my classroom, it is fair game. This includes digital sensors and computers. Um, what you're going to be asked to do is identify the quantities that you will measure and how you will measure them. Okay, so what are you going to measure and what tool are you going to use to measure that thing? The quirk is that you need to choose variables that can be directly measured by that equipment. Let's say you want, you need velocity in this experiment. You basically have two options. You can say, I'm going to measure the velocity with a motion detector and computer. The reason that works is because the motion, direct, motion detector and computer directly give you a value for velocity. Now, here's a weird phrasing that technically doesn't work. If you say, I will measure the velocity using a meter stick and a timer, they will not accept that because... Neither of those pieces of measurement equipment directly give you velocity. What you would have to say is that I'm going to use the meter stick to measure distance and the timer to measure time. I will then use these pieces of information to get velocity. Yes, you do actually have to do this. Uh, when you get to the procedure section for the experimental design, my recommendation is uh, write out one full data collection run in as excruciating detail as necessary. Essentially, could you think about, could I give this procedure to someone who has no idea what physics even is, and would they be able to do it? That is the determining factor. Um, so write out one full data collection run, and then say, repeat as many times as necessary, um, and then repeat the whole thing for these other conditions, right? 10 trials per location, 10 trials per set of initial conditions is ideal. That's what they kind of want. Um, blah, blah, blah. You might not be asked to graph it. You'll be fine. All right. QQT, qualitative quantitative translation. This is uh, something in which you will be asked to write a bunch of sentences, then uh, write some equations or a graph and then talk about how they connect. Um, so when you're given a, when, you, when you're asked for a written scenario, they will usually explicitly say not to use equations. Um, and then let's just go, let's talk about some terminology. If they say something like determine an expression for, that just means that you're gonna do a derivation. So derive an expression for and determine an expression for are the same. Um, be neat and tidy in your derivation. You may get points for a step in the middle, not just the final answer. All right? I'm going to scrounge as many points as possible. Um, remember that there are going to be some, thing, some types of questions where you will be asked to check a box um, and then uh, justify your selection. There are kind of two case, two ways that this can be scored. Way number one, you have to check the, cor the correct box uh, to earn any credit, uh, but you only earn that credit if your explanation is good. You don't get any points for checking the correct box. The other way that this could happen 
is it doesn't matter what box you check as long as your explanation matches the box that you checked. Um, and usually it also has to match what you said in the previous part of the problem. So my general uh, advice is, and this is for everything, pick a line of reasoning and keep it correct and consistent within that line of reasoning. It is definitely not in your best interest to waffle all over the place. Um, just if you think something, if you think one thing, if you think if you have a, an, a, a line of thinking about the scenario, just full send, go with it. Uh, you very well may be rewarded for having good physics thinking skills, even if your original premise is flawed. Uh, you may also be asked to kind of suss out relationships between variables. Like if I increase variable X, what happens to variable Y? Does it increase? Does it decrease? Does it stay the same? You know, how do we, how do these things like connect to each other? Finally, the paragraph length response. Um, you actually have to write a paragraph. It needs to be in full sentences with good vocabulary and grammar. Um, minimal equations and diagrams, if any. Words is what they want here. Um, specifically, and this, this, italics, this italics is from College Board. Uh, full credit may not be earned if a paragraph length response contains any of the following. Principles not presented in a logical order, lengthy digressions in an, within an argument, or primarily equations and diagrams of little linking prose. So your ideas should follow logically from one to the next. They should stay on topic, um, and you have to uh, use mostly words. I will also say, again, be consistent. You can't contradict yourself, all right? I've seen this a million times. Students don't know. The cor they, don't, they think one thing, but it might also be something else. So they're like, screw it. I'm going to put both on the page, and hopefully they'll give me some credit. No. As soon as you c contradict yourself, the graders no longer make any assumptions about which of those things you actually think is true. They don't know. They don't know you. If you say a right thing and a wrong thing, it's just as likely that you accidentally said the right thing as you accidentally said the wrong thing. So you just don't get credit. All right. Um, just be consistent. Uh, another tiny quirk. Try not to use the word it. Right? If you're going to use the word it, just replace it with the noun that it stands for. Hey, right? weird, but do it. Um, and then for the rest, you'll be fine. The same rules apply. They, they are going to be a kind of smorgasbord of the various other types. So that's that. Um, Saturday, March 20th. Doors open at 7. I need you in the media center lobby by 730. So we can get you in front of a computer and get this done. I'll see you then.